said that you would come again You said that we would remain friends But you know that I do not depend on nothing or no one So why would you show up so uninvited Then just change my mind like that Please don't take this personal But you ain't Hello, 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 hello. How is everybody doing? I'm so glad that you guys are here. I see a whole 42 people here and boy, am I surprised. All 42 of you, please hit the like button because y'all were being real stingy about my posts for this reality show. <laughs> I have some amazing guests backstage. I cannot wait to hear their opinions on this reality show. I didn't know that this was going to be that uh, provocative and get so much pushback from y'all about whether or not y'all wanted me to discuss it. We are not going to waste any time. I'm going to read a couple of your comments and we're going to go ahead and get started because y'all tried it. We're going to cover everything here like we always do. <laughs> Already starting with the mess. Please know why. You know why. We, we do it because we have to. We need to. <laughs> There's substance here for us to talk about amongst whatever hatred you guys have for Gerard Carmichael because there seems to be a whole lot. <laughs> hey, struggle and guests. Hello, Nicole. Thank you so much for being here. What is this movie about? It is not a movie. It is a show, Adrian. Check it out. It is on HBO Max. Let's see. Uh, hello, Faith Family and Fun Reviews. Thank you for being here. We have Nisha in the house. Make sure you guys are hitting that like button, showing some love, and make sure y'all show some love to my guests too. Damn, struggle. <laughs> I was about to put your face on the back of a milk carton. Glad to see you hit the like button and listen. Don't do that. I know I've been a little absentee. But I'm, I'm coming back. Thank you so much, Mac. Don't don't do that to me. Let's get one more in. Let's see. We have TP here in the house. Thank you so much for being here. And we got a whole super out the not out the gate. Not y'all showing love out the gate. You know I love money. <laughs> hey, struggle. Did you know this? Uh, Gerard Carmichael was into book. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all. Uh, didn't have a TV series a while back with David Allen Greer. Yes, I did. And yes, I did. We're not going to say that word because y'all know YouTube don't like me anyway. But thank you so much for that $20 super chat. I will show you some love in a second. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't be surprising me with words. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing my guests out so we can get into what they have to say and also get into their platforms and, you know, what, what they have to offer over there. First guest, she has been here several times at this point. So some love to Ashley with my sweet perspective. Hey, girl. <laughs> Uh, I think you're muted, Ashley. There you go. Hey, girl. Hey, listen, I be singing in the background, so I never want to make sure that I'm interrupting <laughs> the flow of things. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? Yeah, you know, I try to have a vibe before we get in here and get into the mess. Before I bring out my other guests, give me just your brief overall description of how you felt about the show. <sighs> Problematic. Okay. Okay problematic but not for the reasons you think uh and honestly it was heartbreaking after i watched the first episode i literally shed a tear like i it, it, it felt I, like a cry for help it okay, felt like okay. cry for i love it i love it can't wait to get into why because i was i was having a kiki <laughs> I have some additional guests. All three of him are, are of them are here for, for the very first time. Like, I am so mad excited that these guys decided to grace us with their presence because you know they'd be booked and busy. I swear they post every five minutes and I'll be trying to keep up. Welcome to the stage, Fish and Jelly. <laughs> Right, Tyra. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys so much for being here. What did you guys think about the show? Well, the first uh, three episodes so far. 
You know, I was excited to get your message because we do like your uh, content. But uh, when you said it was for Gerard Carmichael, I was a little disappointed. However, um, I think the name of your channel is appropriate because getting through these episodes was a struggle. <laughs> oh, really God. Was. <laughs> oh, gosh. I just was looking and I was like, I would really love. And it's not even like a poignant thing. I was like, I want some gay perspective on this. Gerard is a gay man. You know, they may have a totally different opinion than I do on this show. And I was like, I don't really just know. I was like, oh. They're gay. <laughs> we are we are professionally homosexual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna ask and see what they say because I I just believe it or not, I ask you guys before I even watch the show myself. <laughs> oh, well. I watch I watch just because I got just the I read through the synopsis and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna talk about this regardless. Let me get my little ducks in a row because you know we're always busy and pushing for content. It's like let me ask and see what they say so I can prep and then I'll watch it. I was like, oh I'm so glad I asked them. This is gonna be so juicy. <laughs> But, you know, last but not least, my girl always watching is in the house. When I was sitting on the bed, y'all, and I had, you know, I couldn't get past 72 subscribers to save my life. This was the first person I subscribed to, the first country creator I had any type of camaraderie with, who was like, you know, go girl, keep going. You know what you're doing. I, you're like, I see potential. I was like, because girl, I'm failing. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. She is here and I could not be happier to finally share a space with her. Hello, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. What, what did you think about the show? I had mixed emotions because I really loved his HBO special, Rathaniel. Mm -hmm. And I think it had the vulnerability of that, yes. but in the worst way possible, almost. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I appreciated the honesty, but it, it, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was the vulnerability and the, the entertainment, but it's hard to know what, where that balance is. I think that's that that's what drew me to him a little bit in the first place because I was in uh I met him which we're going to get into through the Carmichael show and I thought some of his comedy and maybe a little bit of his stand up there was a lot of vulnerability and transparency and then we kind of get into the narrative of him coming out and it felt like it kind of switched to something else but not to waste any time let's go ahead and get into the mess got a couple of slides here I didn't even know what to leave and what to take away it was a whole lot going on in this show and nothing at all at the same time but Ashley, I am definitely going to come to you first because I think you gave the most pushback when I brought it up. So you was like, ugh, what? Because <laughs> you had already watched the episode of the show and you decided to kind of drop it because you weren't interested. And it's like, you know what, Tyra asks, I'm going to give it to you. How do you feel about Gerard Car Carmichael? Ever since I posted him even a little bit, all I keep seeing is industry plant. I have, you know, the stand up, the movies, and it's like he had this instantaneous success. He comes out. What exactly is his narrative? And do you feel like his career is being pushed by an agenda? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot, right? <laughs> That's kind of deep and nuanced. I honestly hadn't even thought about it in those terms. I'd honestly just thought about the episode as it was. I was, I'm not a fan of his stand up wasn't a fan of the show, really, the sitcom that he had. Um, but I was like, okay, I'm interested in finding out more about him, right? And so <laughs> I, I don't know if it's about being an industry plant. I think there are like some deep-seated emotional wounds. Uh, it, it gave like self-flagellation. Like it gave like I... I'm like a, like some sort of sadomasochist or something to me. I don't know why he wanted to make all of this public. Like even from the whole Tyler, the creator situation, like he rejected you off camera. Why bring him on here to reject you again? Yeah. Um, him engaging in super risky behavior, not being a man of character in <laughs> in any way possible. It's, it's gross, honestly. And I was like, <laughs> does he want people to like hate him? Like, and mm -hmm. the only person I feel like is being a truth teller to him is the man in the mask. He was like, why oh. are you doing this? I, I love you, right? Like, <laughs> why are we doing that? I'm not, I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm going to be a part of it, but I'm not going to be a part of it. Um, so, yeah, I just was left with a lot of like, oh, man. And then I was like, is this a cry for help? Like, is he on the edge? Like, is he on the <laughs> precipice of something? Like, what, what's happening? So, I, I mean, I had all the thoughts, Tyra. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Nick Joseph, 
Were you guys interested in his career at all? Did you guys see Rothaniel or things like the Carmichael show? I know uh, on on the count of three, the movie, I believe he either directed or wrote either one. I enjoyed that. And I really like the Carmichael show also. But how do you feel about his career? If you have any investment in it and do you feel like an agenda is being pu pushed with his narrative and what he's trying to express outward for what feels like forever now? <laughs> we hadn't watched the Carmichael show okay. and we were asked to review Ralph Daniel. So we have a podcast episode talking about that. So that was my first introduction to him. We've also reviewed two of his movies on the count of three and poor things. Yes. I'm not a fan of his comedy per se. Mm -hmm. uh, so do I think he's a plant? I don't know. People, people go viral, people get attention and it builds. I don't know if he were an interesting plant. I feel like he would be doing more. Maybe <laughs> I've been familiar with him for a while through film. I don't watch his stand up. I've only seen Rothaniel uh, for his stand up, but he's he's been around a minute um, in film. Like I saw the Meddler. He's in those two neighbors films with Zac Efron. Yeah. So I've had an awareness of him. Um, I, I don't. I to me this reality show feels more like a bid to stay relevant but in the most desperate kind of way um it reminded me a lot of a larry kramer book which is the plural word of a the f slur which felt felt the same way like why are you choosing to reveal these kinds of things um because there's really no substance and and at worst it's kind of boring yeah no oh, god i thought it was just me i thought it was just me yeah. <laughs> no go ahead no, I, 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 after watching three episodes, I'm not sure what the point of this is from, we, we talked a lot afterwards and I kept thinking like, if I thought about this as like an executive for a streaming platform, I would love this show because it's divisive. People are going to talk about it. They're going to be headlines. So it's great for me in that regard. But if I were his publicist, I would hate it. Like, so do you want people not to like you? Who's your core audience? Are you pushing them away from you? I still have that question. Who does he think his core audience is? It certainly changed when he came out. Yeah. I would even, do, and I'm sure we'll get into it, but during the show, he has stand-up breaks where we mm -hmm. hear the audience sort of like groaning and they're uncomfortable. It's like, dude, I don't know. The, the, the people who are paying your bills are literally telling you like, we are not with this. <laughs> and you're still going. I don't know. Uh, Ali, how do you feel about like, because you I know you watch Rothaniel and I don't know, it's it's like this, he's kind of trying to recapture the essence of Rothaniel again to maybe have that big uproar of success that he has before. But to me personally, this just felt like even though there was a lot of transparency, it felt like there was uh some pandering. But always watching, I know that you had interested an interest in watching this show. And do you still uh, have interest to watch it any further? And how do you feel about his career overall? You know, when you messaged me, I really thought this was a special. I didn't realize it was a series. Yeah. So I'm wondering what they're going to do for eight episodes. But I, it's exactly as you said. With that HBO special, he blew up. Yeah. And this could have been an appropriate follow-up. And, like, he, he's doing... It's like he's revealing all these things about himself, but it's on a superficial level. Yeah. It's like you have the power to change these. He's so self-aware that it's hard for me to, it's almost like, okay, if you know you're doing all these things, just change. Like, it's like, okay, I'm doing all <laughs> these things wrong. And then that's where the story stops. Like there's nothing deeper. Whereas with that stand up, I felt like that was the most open we got from him. Yeah. So it just kind of like it took away all of that, all of that vulnerability that he had. Yeah, it's just like, well, I didn't, I didn't, I don't try to take away from anybody's story, especially someone around 30 at the time having the courage to finally come out. But it just wasn't like, you know, it wasn't an Ellen DeGeneres type moment. I was like, well, you know, honey, uh, people been out. <laughs> For, you know, a long time now. And it just seems like he's been trying to capitalize off of that groundbreaking thing to where we're not even focusing on the comedy stylings that I liked about him before. And just the complete narrative is I'm gay and this is the gay stuff I like. I'm like, OK, well, all right. 
I can I can kind of get into that, but I can't be, you know, I, I expected a, a little bit more uh, from this. And this is his second special with HBO. I have home movies down there. He also had, you know, a, spe a special where he's trying to be uh, introspective and have interviews with his family. It's like he's just trying to go and just get up close and personal as possible to kind of have relatability. And it's just not coming across. But I also can't be upset that I kind of I kind of like the fact that he's he's not likable like everybody's always trying to be appealing and likable I like that I don't like him <laughs> but uh we open this first episode and it's just you know old Tyler we need this date for the Emmys but in the meantime Tyler isn't responding we have grinder random hookups and a little bit of the him coming out still having that strain on his family and I was like what what were we supposed to do with this Ashley, um, how did you feel when we had the repeat offender of the grinder hookups? And did you feel like he was trying to fill a void of, you know, since I can't have Tyler, I'm going to, you know, have all these randos stop by? Or was it like, this is just his everyday life, whether he can have Tyler or not? Or was this just something for TV? <laughs> I mean, not to fast forward, but we kind of find all that part out, right? Like, it, it, yeah. like a, a, probably an addiction. I don't know, though. This is what behooves me. Why you would meet some random stranger. You don't know if this man has bathed and you decided to put, insert his entire foot into your mouth. Like I just, like that was beyond me. I'm like, okay, this is, this is a shock value. Like he's just trying to make us gasp. Um, I don't think it was so much about Tyler. Like as much as he was like, I'm so in love with my best friend, blah, blah, blah. I think this was about, this was about the show and maybe, I don't know, him being humiliated, creating that moment again. Um, I don't know who he thought it might appeal to. Like, clearly, I do think we did kind of delve a little bit into the rejection, you know, from his mom and how he's handling that. Um, and of course, that's not going to sit well with anyone. He's up for this huge award. I think probably the biggest award um, he's received up to this point. Uh, and he still left very empty. Like I said, it, yeah. it was very shallow, very kind of superficial uh, moments. We didn't, even the Tyler interaction to me <laughs> wasn't authentic or genuine. He already rejected you. Like, off, you know, he doesn't want you, my guy. Like, <laughs> I don't know. What, it was disingenuous. That's what it kind of gave. And I think he was going for shock value with all of these people in and out. Like, and the, like I said, the foot thing, love, like, have it right you like your fetishes but wash his feet first maybe maybe show us a scene <laughs> of you washing his feet before you inserted them in your mouth yeah I don't know, Ashley, that almost made me feel like, did you vet these people before they came? There is no way you are putting a stranger's whole foot in your mouth. Like, you're just not. Like, I just I just don't buy that. That is, that, that, that shit's gross. I'm sorry. Like, when I saw it in the trailer, I was like, oh, okay, he got a little thing popping with his man. I, I get it. We, we, lo we love a kink. And I was like, you yeah. <laughs> you don't know this man and you're putting his foot in your and I'm like what what exactly is this supposed to prove you have him kind of having this instantaneous connection with this random person and you kiss them and we you know we never see them again and it's just this revolving door and I'm just like in anticipation of the end he's like who is this for fish mm -hmm. jelly how, how, how did you guys feel about you know all the sex going on in the grinder of it all <laughs> so I think this is where we come in as experts um, so uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so to the well, regarding the grinder and the hookups, I think, and maybe re referencing what Nick already said about the Larry Kramer book, which is titled The F Slur. And there was a lot of pushback against that book within the community because other gay people felt like, why are you telling all of our secrets? Uh -huh. yeah. So his behavior is very common. Like it is very common to, you know, hook up with strangers. And that is a part of the culture that mm -hmm. I think felt very authentic. Like you, like it is, it, it does sound crazy when you say it, like, why would you ever invite a stranger over? That is a very <laughs> common behavior. So, but it, it does speak to maybe um, him being void of certain things, searching for something. I think it was uncomfortable to watch, especially the, the toe sucking scene, because in my mind, I just think like, I often... Like when we make videos and do our podcast, I often think like, what if my mom heard this or saw it? Yeah. Like I try to make sure that I don't get too crazy. <laughs> so I think I was more shocked that he went that far. I think there's a way to be classy about it. I think that um, using the word shock value, it's superficial shock value. 
there is nothing that he's done that is shocking to most gay people. It just feels, it feels like there are moments where something uh, could be made with this. Like he, he throws out randomly that comment about slave play and then has a kind of a confession at, at some point in this, I think he's in his closet or something saying like he feels a certain way about that too. Like he feels somewhere between a black bull and a, a cuck. And it's like, well, okay, let's connect the dots. Let's see where that is a problem within the community and using this platform to actually say something and have, have a conversation that's worthwhile instead of just being um, this narcissistic, self-involved, endless parade is what he's doing. Yeah, and regarding Tyler, like we already said, I mean, he already knew that man him. <laughs> and I just think like to get, to let this man get on camera and officially respond to your feelings by standing up, walking into another room where production is and farting. <laughs> I mean, that is, what more do you need to hear or smell to know yeah. that this man is not feeling you? Yeah. Yeah. I think what was sending me, like you guys said, with the whole, uh, you know, what if my mom sees this? He's so he's been very vocal since he came out about the effect that this is having, like the strain that this is having on their relationship. So it's like we're pushing like you're, you're pushing, you know, <laughs> what little bit of relationship you have left. Not saying, you know, he shouldn't be able to be carefree and live out loud as himself. But it's just like, you know, do you have any consideration for how right. this may, you know, have overflow into what already seems to be maybe having strain for your family? Well, I believe <laughs> his, his assistant tells him, like, you know, yeah. maybe you need to give your friends and family time to adjust to this, you know, yeah. change. And it's like you're going like full stop, 100 <laughs> percent. I don't know. That's not how I would approach it. I think we need mm -hmm. to give people time and respect their evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's doing a lot, too much, if you ask me. But always watching before I come to you, I don't think it was so much the revolving door that bothered me because you know, get it how you live. I'm here for it. I think for me, it was the all of this, what seems to be him being really promiscuous. And then we have the comment about like the boy butter. And it's like, oh, that's for, you know, backdooring when we have a raw situation. And I was like, are you being Mike? I was just like, is he being safe? That's, <laughs> that's you know, that's, that's, the, that's the first thing that popped into my mind. Like, is he being safe with these random people? But always watching, how, how did you feel about this? Did you feel like, you know, he were using using these men to cope at all? Or is he just, you know, having a good time? I think he was using it to cope because he there's there's a difference between intimacy and sex and I don't think he quite knows the difference yet and I and I think this strain especially with his family and how they received him being openly gay is still bothering him and so I I really do think he's trying to because he he says it many times he's like I'm I'm like a 17 year old like I'm yeah. experiencing things for the first time and that's how it feels like that's how you would behave when you're young like you just kind of experiment so in that context, it does make sense um, mm -hmm. because he is using it as a Band-Aid. Like he, he's very self-aware. He says, it does help me for a moment and then I'm lonely again. And I could, very I, I could see that, but I'm and like, why do we got to see it? Like, why, why, why should we care about it though? Like, <laughs> even though these things might be monumental for you, it just wasn't enough with this kind of being a viral situation and it kind of, uh, I guess the toe sucking, just being heard around the world, watching this, I think I maybe expected a little bit more and it was just like, this is it? This is what you're doing? All right, maybe it's just the first episode. Then you watch the second episode, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but but anything else on this, always watch it. I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> you know, this, this issue even with his, like these one night stand, it, it, it seeps into all his relationships, not just, sexual it's like his friendships it's like a bigger problem and I, I wish the show was more it had more substance in terms of trying to make these connections yeah because there's something there yeah it's relatable Maybe. yeah so it's hard to it's like I, i'm finding things <laughs> you find it but then it's just like uh it's just it's, it's not quite there Let's see, Tyra, my soul sister. Salute panel. Hello, hello, Dane C. Thank you so much for the $2. Once again, here we go. Gerard Carmichael is Johnny Gill's love child. What? what where? <laughs> if you would have said Chris Rock's love child, I swear I would have let you have that. Johnny Gill's love child of all people. Uh, Gerard Carmichael is sexy Ray. Love. What? Slash Lil Nas. Like, you know what? I love when you come here with my $2. Will you always come with a good $2 and a good trolling comment? I love you so much, Jane. Thank you so much. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Shout out to the 140 people here in the live. Please show some love. Please go hit up my people down here in the panel. Everybody's information is in the description. But moving on to the, the Tyler rejection heard around the world. Um, it wasn't so much, I don't think, about Tyler rejecting him. Let's see, I have deep feelings for you, the awkward tension of it all, you stupid B. <laughs> for me, it was like, if you are a fan of Tyler the Creator, which I am, I'm like, you talking to yourself. The revolving door that we get to see, we don't we don't see any black men go through it, okay? <laughs> they are very vocal as far as Tyler is concerned about the type of man he likes. You know, we like, we want the little Leonardo DiCaprio rejects. We want us a Johnny, Johnny Depp situation. You know, we, we, we like the white man, you know, we're here for it. And just for them to kind of just like have this conversation as if he doesn't know his friend or, you know, the type of man that he likes, I'm like, Apart from you guys having a strain on your relationship because you expressed your feelings and he clearly rejected you, Tyler doesn't date black men <laughs> at all, <laughs> at all. And you being, you know, a friend and a fan and the music and the whole nine and being that close, you already know that. So I'm like, was this a whole, I just feel like this was a whole setup. And with the emotion that everybody, I've been seeing people do the the reviews like, oh my God, he rejected him. Look at the sincerity and the hurt in Gerard's. How could he just reject him like that? And, you know, suck, suck the neck bone off of whatever was on that plate. It looked delicious because he was eating it with his fingers. <laughs> and it's just, I was just like, ah, this was giving me like, okay, this is definitely, I felt like it was a setup between friends because both of you date white men. Ashley, in uh, the awkwardness of here, how do you feel about... Because both of these are two men who pretty much kind of came out on their own terms at their own time. But they are um, explicitly just solely dating a uh, white man or, you know, of a different nationality. They never date any black men. Do you feel like that it is um, just a decision that they're making consciously because maybe this is just what I'm attracted to? Or is there a sense of like with uh, Gerard's situation, I've been rejected by this certain community that I'm not finding anyone in that community attractive, you know, for whatever reason. And I'm just going to, you know, date the type of man that I want to date. I mean, I think I listen, I give people permission to like what they like and have preferences. I don't want to take it to a place and be like, oh, they're self-loathing or whatever, because that's all they want. But maybe they just want something different. And, and I, 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 I'm satisfied with that's just who they like. Right. Yeah. Um, I think my issue with the exchange here is the fact that, like, I it did make me question the validity of their friendship. Um <laughs> It, you know what I mean? Like, is, is it really a thing? Like, are you guys really friends in real life? <laughs> um, because even with the whole Emmy invite and like, oh, nah, man, I'm like five minutes before or whatever. I was like, this is like a big day. If this is like your real friend, you'd kind of put whatever to the yeah. to the back burner and do that. Yeah, it, it this just seemed kind of put on. Right. And then, yeah, I remember when you told me before. Gerard and I called you or stupid B or no, I'm sorry. Gerard reminded Tyler of what he said. And he was like, oh, yeah, I did say that to you. And then proceeds <laughs> to ask him if he's finished everything on the plate, not because he wants anything that was left on the plate, but because he's about to get up and pass gas. It just seemed <laughs> artificial. Like it, it wasn't an authentic or genuine moment. It lacked sincerity for me, but yeah, mm -hmm. like what you like, baby. I mean, you know, they just they, that's what I like. I, yeah, I wouldn't take it any further than that. Um, of course, I do think Gerard has deep emotional issues, but I don't think that's necessarily playing out with the men he chooses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that's no, no, I mean. it's probably just me. I was just waiting for a brother to walk through the door. Uh, fish <laughs> jelly. <laughs> how how did you guys feel about this? Did you feel like that there was any sincerity here with their relationship, and if they are indeed friends at all, or was this just for TV? <laughs> I agree with the statement that if they are supposed to be that close and to not have figured out like that we're going to go to the Emmys together mm -hmm. and message five minutes, before, like I mean, it just is crazy, and I <laughs> it does feel manufactured. Mm -hmm. It feels manufactured because, as you were saying, we already know they're very clear about what kind of men they seem to gravitate towards. But that's not part of the conversation they're having in that moment. Like when Tyler, the creator, says, oh, we're like family. It's like, well, yeah, like what? Let, let's go further on with that. But they don't. It, that's, it just feels fake. The other thing that I've experienced and you would agree is that gay male friends like we 
we have to establish pretty early on, like whether or not yeah, <laughs> we're attracted to each other, and, <laughs> like if this is going to work out. I mean, this is not something that you would, you wouldn't have a best friend and never have approached that subject. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, and, and also to his credit, I think we both can attest to people assume what you like based on a very small bit of information they can see about you that, that yes. they think that you have these deep seated preferences. Maybe that's not the case. So, you know, I, I don't know him personally, so I, I can't really say, but based on the presentation of in the first three episodes, I feel like there is an easier way he could, he could have a little more variety because these, it feels very <laughs> um, and pointed. So I think that's the, the curious part of it. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Tyler create, I want to say Tyler, the creature, Tyler, the creator, <laughs> you know, he has lyrics that would make you think that he does prefer, you know, like a river Phoenix type kind of guy. Yes. And then Gerard does say he likes twinks, although he does say you know, some Latino from the Valley. He kept saying that. Is that not derogatory? Twink? Yeah. No, I think that's a category okay. people <laughs> use to describe themselves. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's the danger in stating your preferences is that you alienate people. People make assumptions about you when the reality is like it's hard enough to find people you actually connect with. So yeah. to state that you have these filters it's like, well, that, that's going to make it even more difficult to meet people who you might actually have a connection with. So, I mean, I, I think it's really reckless. And I think if I had a platform or I could demonstrate the type of people I like to engage with, and it's also frivolous anyway, I also was disappointed in the type of men who were walking through the door. Yeah. Um, he could have been, he's already being strategic. Why not show a little more diversity? But, you know. Well, I, I think the smartest person was the person who showed up with their cover face. <laughs> it's like, they, you know, I love you, but yeah, I, I don't want to be seen in this space. It just gave me not so much, you know, you can have your preference, but I think it kind of added to not to say you're supposed to be finding the love of your life on grinder hookups or something like that. But it was just all about, you know, it's all about opulence and all this, these riches that he has and uh, just... I was like, he's he's clearly not looking for any personal connection. And then it's kind of given off. Uh, well, you know, well, maybe he wanted Tyler to be that for him. And since he's not, he's just uh, kind of going through all these people. And then once we, you know, switch to the next slide with, you know, Mike, the boyfriend, I was like, oh, it doesn't matter who the hell you have. You just, it's just, you know, you're just cl clearly doing what you want to do. But always watching, how, how did you feel about this, this deep rooted hurt that he received from Tyler? And did you feel anything about it? <laughs> I felt like it could have been a great setup to have all these conversations and points that you just brought up, but it just felt like clickbait. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, you know, something for the girlies on Twitter. Like <laughs> it just, there was just nothing there. And their conversation, like there was so much buildup and we know that they've already had this conversation before. So there's a difference yeah. between revisiting it and then having it again. So that part, I didn't really understand. Mm -hmm. it, so it just felt like you built us up for nothing. There I just, is nothing. I just saw so much similarity between him and Tyler. I'm like, oh, you have a desire to date yourself. And I'm like, if you want to date yourself and I feel like they are mirroring each other, Tyler has explicitly said he has no, you know, no desire to date black men whatsoever. And he's attracted to who's attracted to. So I'm like, why would we even have this damn conversation? It just felt, it just, it just felt really, really pointless to me, honestly. Okay. <laughs> Oh, let's see. All right, not y'all short. Y'all, y'all know I like money. Thank you so much, <laughs> King Nikki TV, for the twenty dollars. Date uh who you want, but people who specifically do not date their race is odd for me. Uh, I had an Asian friend who refused to date Asian men. If you refuse to date people who mirror you, there's a problem. In my humble opinion, I know that's right, Nikki. <laughs> Y'all have showed a whole bunch of love that I just feel like we should have a whole little super chat break situation for a second. And in light of this live, I just felt like we should have some Tyler the Creator fun because why not? Thank you guys so much for the love. Keep the super chats coming. We keep it in street. We keep it street. I took a loss, but you still gonna get beat. It's still gonna be. How much it costs? It never been cheap. It never been. Turn your click up, dog. Turn them up, turn your up, dog. Turn them up. Tiny streets can't cross. 
bossy. Cross them up, all these street need bosses. Cross them up, turn your click up, dog. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much. Y'all, I'm getting really good at these lives, y'all. Show me some love. I'm getting so good. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> y'all know I can't stand alive. I'm getting really, really good. But once we leave this and him harboring over what seems to be a closer connection, we get a whole episode entitled Mike, and we get several things just dropped on us like bombs, in my opinion. Uh, we have Mike, we have therapy, we have monogamy, uh, sex addi addiction. Uh, I am just as faithful as your proximity to me. Then we have things, you know, he's interested in uh, more sex play things like, you know, the mere foot fetish that we saw, a little choking. And then we have comments thrown out like he was a, more like a sexual being at three or four. I'm like, what the hell are we supposed to do with that? Ex explain. What, what does that mean? And then we have, you know, a little bit more obscurity and, you know, him cheating. And we mentioned things like slave play along with seeing him go to, you know, what looked like a, it looked fun, a little sexual amusement park place. Tell me what I said. That looked like a key. I, I, I was here for that. All the bouncing on, on the titties. I love that. But <laughs> Ashley, uh, how did you feel about Mike and him wanting monogamy from Mike and him not willing to give the same in return? You know, well, at least up until the point that he's out of his face. <laughs> yeah, this whole situation, again, I feel like I feel like a lot of, you know, a lot of it is a little bit nuanced. Like, I feel like it's, it's gross to, to tell someone that you're with them. And that you're going to be monogamous to them. And as soon as they hit the door for the airport for those next two weeks, you got somebody cycling in and out. Um, and then it's like a cycle, right? A never ending cycle. But then the the caveat to that is that I don't think Mike will ever leave Gerard as long as Gerard, Gerard whatever his name is, is, is footing the bill, right? Yeah. Um, and I feel like as we kind of walk, walk through the rest of these episodes, um, I wonder how many people are in his space because of what he offers and provides to them. And so I think that also is kind of layered in why and how he treats people, how he does. And I think it's because he can um, and he gets away with it. And at this point, there's no real consequences. I think as we go to the next episode, he has a little bit of a consequence, uh, but yeah. it seems like even in that, it's the same old thing. I think in this episode, they enlist a counselor, a therapist, <laughs> Uh, that's gonna help and I think she was wanting to tell Mikey to run like run Mikey run um, but like I said I think I think Mike is there he's he's the forever optimist I, I kind of want him to stand up and look in the mirror and say Mike you deserve better yeah, <laughs> the optimist I, it just looked like he had a cute coin and I was gonna be alone for the ride as long as your coin was cute yeah. The whole, like when he said, I think he said we have a long distance relationship, but it's not really long distance because I have money. <laughs> you know, he can be here at my beck and call whenever. And clearly he cheats multiple times and he uh, forgives him. But I did think it was very, I just wish we would have alluded and got into like the depth of these situations. There are people who operate like this. I am, I want monogamy, but I don't want to give it back. I want to be faithful, but I am faithful to you just as long as you are in my face. And I was hoping that we would explore a little bit more with that or even explore a little bit more or coming to you, uh, Fish Jelly, about the whole slave play comment and, you know, those moans and groans that came from the audience and kind of getting into, that's one thing to have a fetish and enjoy things. And then it comes to like fetishizing someone and it kind of gives off mistreatment to me. How did you guys feel about that? <laughs> well, even before that, I was so bothered by, and I don't know if anyone else understood what this was, but he sprays that cologne and says it smells like MLK. <laughs> and that, I needed answers. I don't know. <laughs> well, and then the boyfriend's response is just to say, like, yeah, now I can't not think that too. And which suggests that there's no parody in their relationship. Gerard's famous and rich. So this kid's gonna say yes to whatever. Yeah. Really, like, I mean, to quote my girl Janet Jackson, this is a story mm -hmm. about control. I think. <laughs> Gerard wants to control this situation. I think when you combine that with his need to be provocative, mm -hmm. I think that's where the slave play, race play comment came from. But then like you already said, in a separate segment, he talks about how sometimes he feels conflicted thinking that they just want him because he's a black buck. He's some sort of Mandingo type character. But yeah. I, I mean, I don't know, you're putting yourself out there in that way. 
and not again not connecting the not the dots bringing it you invited this kind of energy into your house because you think it's provocative or uh, maybe you want to experience it but what how does that make you feel after and what is what, do you keep doing the same thing like, <laughs> yeah, this is the danger of trying to you know as a celebrity and the kind of comedy he does trying to be provocative and then balancing that with like who he is as a person i feel like that line seems really blurred especially in areas like this where he like in his comedy being provocative and talking about race is separate from like you actually interacting with yeah. non-black men and doing these things where you're in control and you're putting these people in awkward situations and then now it's on record he looks like both of y'all look like clowns to me. Yeah. So I don't know if it's worth it for whatever HBO Max is paying. Um, mm -hmm. But I was quite disappointed in his commentary. Well, from what I, the clips that they're showing from his stand up, well, his, well he's sitting down, his sit down mm -hmm. specials, it, that he is taking constantly from his own life and recycling that and exaggerating that. So to, I don't know if this whole series is a way, because once you're famous, you kind of are isolated. You don't experience the same kind of life experiences. So everything's very manufactured. So I don't know if this is also like a desperate way to really do something shocking. And conjure him. up and, material. Right. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I felt like I was, felt like he was using, like these are all just tech, test subjects for me to use later on in my stand up and repurpose it there. And oh, I can go a, a notch further and have visual, you know, a, a visual of it and get money from it, you know, that way via HBO. This this just all felt really, uh, I, I love the transparency. Now, I love that he is bold enough to be who he is out in the open and, you know, all the all the foot. But it was it was so surface level, like the whole thing. I, I didn't like the fact that therapy felt laughable. Like it just felt like nothing was being taken serious. I was like, this is, <laughs> you know, some people really uh, need therapy. Mike did look hurt. I'll say that. <laughs> he looked really hurt when he made the comment of, I feel like the uh, cameramen on, are in on something that, you know, that I don't know. Apparently, you know, of course he is, you know, cheating when I'm not away. So that did, I, I did enjoy that, but it was just like, let's not make therapy a, a key key situation as if, you know, it doesn't matter. It just felt like a big waste of time, and I just didn't understand the whole purpose of that. I thought we were about to explore, uh, you know, his sexual feelings from a young age and how we may be, how do we get to the sex addiction? What he's, you know, him taking the sex addiction quiz. I was like, what, what is this? Uh, always watching. Did you care about any of this? And did you feel sorry for Mike? <laughs> I think you said it. Like, there were, he says these comments that you're like, can you please expand on this? Because at one point he discusses his body count where he's like, I don't even know how many. Hmm. And I think the relationship that he has with Mike, all of you touched on it. it. It felt like a power thing, like very transactional because when you're telling someone I'm cheating on you and then taking them to therapy, it's very performative. Yeah, Like there's nothing to that. And so I think what I find very bizarre about this segment is personally, I felt he Mike liked him more than he liked him. Like the, like there was an off balance, and it just it felt like he was just. I, I think you guys said it, it's like an exaggeration. It's like everything is just taken to the the max to a. Uh, it just the stuff that I wanted him to unpack, he didn't unpack, and then they just kind of go off like, oh, we're doing therapy, but it's not mm -hmm. working, and I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing, for some reason, like it's. Well, with there being more episodes, do you feel like he's going to, he's like, I'm saving the gusto for later? Or do you feel like this is all going to be surface level? I think it's surface level. <laughs> so, so disappointing. So, so absolutely disappointing. I, I want, I wanted a little bit more. Like he, it's just, I, I think I felt like he was a little smarter, smarter than he is. I'm, I feel, I'm, I'm mad at myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad at myself because I, I expected so much. But uh, getting into Am I a Bad Friend? Uh, yes, you are. Absolutely. <laughs> Pooh Bear's Wedding and Jessica's Acting. I feel like this episode was hilarious. <laughs> I laughed at it a whole lot. I was like, I love Jessica. <laughs> Give Jessica some more screen time. <laughs> um, actually, how did you feel when we got into just the friend segment? Not so much. Uh, I know we have him 
just be just it's like he was going out of his way to like disconnect from his friend and you do have people who have more of those antisocial tendencies but it's one thing to you know be kind of standoffish and it's another to show up at the wedding late you know oh i'm wearing oh he wanted us to have rented vera wang or something i was like what the hell are you talking about like this is supposedly you know one of your best friends this is I just didn't I just didn't understand what he was trying to do to their relationship. But how did you feel about about that or you know Jessica coming to a uh, touchdown to I guess you know live on his dime cuz that's what it looked like. <laughs> it, it, it it definitely like I said it just keeps getting worse, okay? Um every episode I'm like okay, what's next? And now he's a bad friend on top of everything else. Um yeah, you know, I had to be in Tom Ford. It didn't matter what my friend of 100 years wanted on his special day. I made it about me, right? So I'm in town, I'm there early, right? Or when I'm supposed to be and I stop and get a hot dog because that was more important than being there for my good friend who was there for me and stood by my side through all these years. Disgusting, okay? Um, and then Jessica comes and I'm like, oh, well, that's noble. You know, they go back to their high school <laughs> friendship. And, you know, when I get on, we used to dream together. And, yeah. you know, when I get on, I'm going to take care of you too. But up until a certain point, Jessica, because now I'm ready <laughs> for you to get out. Um, but again, it's it's one of those relationships where there's really no reciprocity, right? She's there, like you said, on his dime, pursuing her dream now. Now, and he's going to just stew about it. Like, okay, she called me 10 times. I'm just going to not answer. Right. And so even Mike at some point is like, you can't do that. Like you can't just not <laughs> talk to her, but apparently this is his MO. Right. I think one of his friends told him, Oh, you've always been this way. You've always yeah. been like that. And so I think his bad behavior has been excused for so long um, that, you know, they're just accustomed to it. I think, you know, even someone mentioned it, you know, performative. I think the whole letter to Pooh Bear that he wrote in the car saying that these were the vows I wrote or whatever the speech I wrote. You're a liar, too. Like, you're, <laughs> you're a liar. I thought, again, I thought it was worse, sir, because I can kind of. I can kind of put it to the side, you know, your romantic issues. If you did, you know, experience some things super early and maybe you treat, you know, the randoms that way. But these people who are close to your heart that you've known for 20 plus years, is this how you value and treat them? It, it was, yeah, it, it left an awful taste in my mouth just for him as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was the, how was I don't know. At first, I was like, you know, everybody doesn't have to be great. Everybody doesn't have to be the most likable person. Everybody doesn't have, you know, absolutely positive traits. And then it was like, okay, now you're going out of your way to be an asshole. <laughs> it's it's one thing. I was like, once again, with the thing of the the audience, like, who is this for? It's I would I thought at first he was trying to be relatable, like you know, hey, I you know uh, I'm struggling with you know finding myself and being out, you know, just like the next person, and I'm experiencing these things in real times that maybe you had at 17 that I'm just now having it. Then it's just like, oh, you do you not want us to like you at all? Like, are, are you trying to isolate a certain segment of your audience? I just don't understand who could watch this and go, you know what, I want to support. Gerard Carmichael and everything he does like it, it's awful now I did I did enjoy Jessica was very funny to me personally her trying to act <laughs> it was it was, it, it was very hilarious to me but uh fish jelly will you be you know calling up Gerard to be your bestie anytime soon <laughs> oh hell no <laughs> he starts the episode by saying I only like to do exactly what I want to do which yeah. makes me think of Maya Angelou saying mm -hmm. when people show you who they are, believe them. He's trash, mama. Like, <laughs> I, I I hated how he treated Jessica or how it's it's edited. Um, like the point where he makes he's so passive aggressive at the point where he's like, Oh, I had sex with Mike and I like to moan and I had to be quiet. Didn't we hear hear about how much money, how rich you are? Go get yourself yeah. a hotel. Your friend is visiting. Like yeah. Communicate with her. It's I felt emotional when they played the old or they showed the old picture and he said, Oh, when we were younger, I promised I would take care of her. Yeah. If I got rich. And then we immediately cut to him like, I didn't mean that she or <laughs> <laughs> I always hear Tyra complaining she cusses too much. Um yeah, so I mean I I found that kind of despicable. He rents her to this apartment and doesn't bother to tell her only for a month. She's bought a spice rack. And then she bought a spice rack. <laughs> She's going to be there for a minute then with all the spices. 
I felt so bad when she was unpacking her little spices. <laughs> I know, but at the same time, I'm like, girl, we can't be giving you no parties in the Hamptons. Like, it just felt uh -huh. like I, I, I understood completely because I am one of those people who like I value my space and my time. You know, we can be the besties of the besties, but girl, you know, like when it's time to go home, it's time to go home. But it was like, if it's going to be all of that, maybe we should have set a certain standard of this is going to be X, Y, and Z. Once you arrive here, how long are you planning to stay? It was just like, he maybe said, you know, oh, come on down. You know, I miss you, girl. I love you. And then when she's there, it's just like, Ugh. like, how long are you going to be in my space? Because I really don't like people like that. Like, it just felt like she was some, I think in the first two episodes, I thought she was just, I thought she was his assistant. <laughs> I didn't know she was, uh, you know, that much of a childhood friend for them to have known each other, you know, since high school. But with them having that much history, you would think that he would owe her a little bit more, not financially, I'm not saying that, <laughs> not, you know, fund her lifestyle, but just, uh, you know, just transparency and honesty of, and the whole thing kind of whispering and nodding to the camera, like, you know, she want to be an actor, she ain't gonna make it, you know, I'm a little like, what, what, what? <laughs> like, it, it, it just, it just felt like really, really awful. And I was like, I wonder how, you know, your friends are going to feel kind of looking back at that and kind of seeing what you really think about them. It's like he's going out of his way to isolate the people who are closest to him, like his mother, his father, and now his friends. It's weird. Uh, always watching. Um, how did you How did you feel about this? <laughs> I, this was my favorite episode. Because <laughs> but it's so exaggerated. Like there's a difference between saying I fall out with a friend to moving my friend out of the apartment and not telling her and then not answering her calls like this is so malicious it's not a bad friend it's like you're a bad person and so there's a difference between what you do and how you do it and i think my issue with all three episodes there's no accountability here because even with the the phone calls you know when he's calling all these people that he did dirty and they're yelling at him yeah and he's like well i wasn't a person then like sir just take it <laughs> It's not about you. Like, if you're going to call people and apologize, you don't control how they receive it. And so he gives energy, but he can't take that energy, it seems. And this was a good uh, episode for that. It, I just... <sighs> Why, like, why, why would anybody want to be your friend after this? Even the whole, I just love the spotlight that it shined on Jessica. Like, girl, you better go, even though the acting was not. <laughs> just the excitement that she had to be there. Like when she got, got the tear, like you saw that shit. Like I did that shit. I just cried on cue. Like I'm getting better. And instead it was just like this false support coming from him or like, girl, you'll never make it. You need to, I think she was a teacher where they're from. Like you need to go back and find your little job. Cause this isn't going to be that. But I just, I was like, what, what do you want us to do with this? <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just really confused about um, does anybody have any thoughts on what this what the narrative of this show is supposed to do for Gerard Carmichael in general because this couldn't possibly be to help his career like it just it just can't I don't like him anymore. <laughs> it's not even it's not even demonstrating his comedic ability the, in the three episodes we watched the only moment where I thought he was showing that he has some comedic talent is when he and Jessica are on the bed and he's saying to her like oh pretend you're this pretend you're yes. that where I, where I thought, oh he has some comedy to him but we spent 90 minutes watching you just be a jerk mm -hmm. so if you're looking for jobs or broadening your audience you you get an F like <laughs> oh man like um did you guys care at all for the because i i just didn't like or i was like are these people giving him the time of day it was almost like because it was that comment like you said like you've always been this way and it's really like you know the uh what's the little comment like money makes you the person you truly are it's like bringing out the worst of what was already i guess dormant in his personality but i at this point with this and the whole Pooh Bear situation, because he didn't seem, I don't know, he didn't seem, Jessica, they don't seem like they're acting to me. It doesn't feel, it felt false with Tyler, but this felt very real to me. And I'm just like, after these things air, what are you going to do then? Because we clearly see you, like Ashley said, you're stopping for hot dogs, still showing up in your, in your black shirt. And it's just, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm just, I'm just not understanding the point at all. And just bringing it to the to the end because at, at this point I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm interested to watch this any further. <laughs> I don't know if I'm interested to watch this any further because I don't know if you guys were checking for it at all. But I was waiting to get to these parents. <laughs> I was kind of waiting to get to this, and 
I was like, how many episodes we got before we get to that? Because Ashley, are you are you sticking around for episode four and beyond? No, ma'am. No, 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 I'm not. Uh, and, you know, to, to, to kind of rewind a little bit to what you said a few minutes ago, um, in the first episode, he talks about him wanting to be this to be his Truman show. Right. You remember the movie with Jim mm -hmm. Carrey? Uh, but he doesn't know he's being recorded. And I think the friend that yeah. he's talking to is like, no, you are trying to spin a yarn here. Like it's going to go, it's going to be edited a certain way. It's going to be then presented and packaged. And so I think, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what this exercise was about. And I said, is it a cry for help? Is he on the edge? Like, because I don't know why you would want this side of yourself to be shown. I don't know. Is it is it some artistic creative moment? But yeah, no, I'm I'm not interested. Um the the family thing to me is kind of heartbreaking. Um I know he mentions, you know, I'm going to my parents' home that I purchased, right? And I can't yeah. even bring Mike with me. And I thought that was kind of heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, no, I, I felt like he was disrespectful to his mother in the first episode. I think he calls her out of her name in one of his I'm not that's not my my ministry at all. Did I miss that? Because I thought it was so touching with the stand up and he was just anticipating the recording like, oh, she's probably saying some horrible. What, she, what could she possibly be saying for 21 seconds? And she says, you know, congratulations, son. I'm proud of you and I love you. I was like, oh, see, you thought it was going to be something terrible. He, what did he say about his mom? He picked that apart, too, though. He said she's the type of person that can have all this stuff going on with him. And still, mm -hmm. that would be her response. I think yeah. there's some deep rooted emotional, like he feels rejection and abandonment probably from his parents yeah. still. Um, and I think she she loves him in the way that she knows how to love. I think he needs to take a page from Ianla's book, <laughs> right? Like, and, and people are who they are, where they are. And that's all you can do. He can't change them. I think it's been a whole exercise in narcissism and his rejection and how he internalizes that. And I, I don't want to see it devolve any further, but I will be tuned in. If any of you guys review it further, I'll, I'll be in the comment section cheering you. On. I will see how this video does. Actually, I cannot promise a thing. <laughs> I cannot. I was really anticipating eventually getting some depth. And I was like, there is no way we can skate around debt with these parents. So whenever we get to those parents, you know, that'll be that. And I'm like, oh, we, we still, we never got to them. Now we're, and I did love the, the Friends episode, but I was just waiting to maybe get, you know, oh, this was the, the point in the reasoning for it all. Fish Jelly, are you guys checking for any additional episodes of the Gerard Carmichael reality show? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we would probably finish it and just talk about it if no one wants, if no, if, if we don't get invited to talk about it more, then I think we would just talk about it. But yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you, Tyra. I'm interested in his parents because I feel like there's a lot of context that mm -hmm. we're not getting as to mm -hmm. why his mom feels the way she does. You know, he admitted that he had sex with well over a thousand people, yes. which means that he was doing things before he came out. Yes. So we don't know what she saw, what he experienced that maybe makes her feel a way. And I think it's really easy to condemn our parents because they don't react the way we want them to. But the reality is our parents know us a little better than we want to admit. And for his body count to be that high, she's probably seen some things, known about some things. And then for him to say he was sexually active at such a young age, you know, maybe she's associating some really inappropriate behaviors with who he might be today. And maybe that's why, you know, we're just getting little sound bites of her quoting certain scripture that is triggering to some people. But mm -hmm. I don't think that, I don't know that she's necessarily in the wrong. Like, I kind of want to hear her side of the story because, as you know, so far, I don't really care for his ass. So, I mean, <laughs> Maybe she's trying to pray the demons out of him. I don't know. <laughs> I think that it feels, there's already a pattern to me that's emerged. Maybe I'm just a paranoid person, though, that seems like this was scripted well in advance. Like, I'm going to have, I'm going to do things that reflect that I'm a bad friend. And maybe, some, and maybe some of it is a combination of, again, exaggeration. Like, maybe he really missed Pooh's wedding. Because a lot of that, the how Pooh is reacting to him at the end, Pooh feels genuine. But... That moment feels like something from a romantic comedy, like John <laughs> Zach holding up the the, the radio. <laughs> like that just feels too scripted. And just with Jessica, it's like her dream. If her dream is to be an actor, you are not helping. You begrudge doing a favor, and then also like 
you don't want to give her any tips like, hey, these <laughs> acting coaches in New York are gruff. If they ask you about Macbeth or Shakespeare, say you know that. Yes. <laughs> Why? Act. Like, just... Why did she go on an audition for Macbeth? <laughs> I just love how serious you say. She's like, well, mom, you know, I, I did it. I did the audition. I don't know if I'm going to get it. But I'm like, girl, you're not going to get that. Just, I'm sorry. Oh, you're you not going to get it. sent me. I was like, ma'am, like, <laughs> just, just say I quit for the day. I'll come back. I, I'm interested to, I might come back because I'm just so interested to get more into the other narrative of his life. Because the way he talks about it is like we have this deep rooted, you know, Christian, biblical, Bible, black family. And, you know, I came out and it was just like earth shattering. But it's like if you have been outside that long with that many par partners, you know, sometimes, you know, you might think you're coming out, but um, I know for, you know, my family members, like, you know, I'm coming out. I just want to let y'all know I was gay. Like, baby, we do that. Oh, we do that. <laughs> you know, normally your your mother or, you know, sometimes cause some people are choose to uh, be unaware. But a lot of the times, you know, your parents, like somebody like your mother is the first person to maybe see those signs or know that, you know, hey, I think maybe my son's interests lie elsewhere. But just maybe getting into unpacking why he is into you know the things that he is into are treating the friends like you said the the poo situation he didn't feel like he was in on it but it was just like if that whole thing was scripted for you why would you use something as serious as this to you know have a scripted moment for your show like that that's just really careless you know for your friends feelings but always watching are you checking for the rest of this show at all <laughs> you know going back to the hbo special he talks a lot about like not hiding anymore and trying to be honest and this, this almost feels like the opposite, like he's going back to hiding. <laughs> and a lot of what he shows us about himself, just if this show came out in like the early 2000s, it would have been great. But <laughs> I just feel like it's very juvenile and it's, it's, it's like shock value for a generation that feels nothing. It's, so it doesn't even really have that going for it. And I think all of you said it, like the stuff about family and about religious guilt, because he does identify as a Christian, I believe. Yeah. So I would have like that is a huge part of the shame. And he talks about having to reconfigure God. And that's what I'm interested in. You know, like yeah. I want to know like how this because as sad as it is to say all of you said it, like your parents do know you. <laughs> Even though they don't say it, they do know you. And so sometimes it's sad to say, but they might not accept us or they might not like the things that we do, and they might never like the things that we do. And I wish he opened up because this seems to be the part that he's really struggling with, but it just gets glossed over. <laughs> so I, I wish if if it, if it had more depth, because I, I really don't think we're going to get deeper than this, to be honest. If, if we get some depth episode four, I'm definitely going to come back. And if you guys are down to join in. I would love to have you back. Like, I, this this just couldn't possibly be it. I'm waiting for the like, aha, like, oh, you guys thought like, not me. This this has to serve some type of higher purpose for him to lay all these things out. It just can't be pointless. Not not for, you know, four or eight or however many episodes that he has in this series. Like, it just can't, y'all. <laughs> it just can't. Shout out to the 185 people here in this live showing love, hitting that like button. I really, really appreciate it, as well as those super chats. Like, I... He, he has a, a, another kind of... Um, I don't know if it's the home because he has home movies. I was like, HBO really uh, sliding you some money. I don't understand why. He has home yeah. movies and then he has this and there's the Mount uh, Mount something sermon where he just goes and he's talking to the pastor in the community. He's talking to his mom as well as his father already. So I don't know if he's kind of getting lost in this narrative of thinking that this is what he has to do because, you know, since I've come out, like, can he kind of get beyond the fact that I'm gay and I'm experiencing things for the first time and I'm living in my truth. Like how long is that going to be the standing for what you paint your comedy or, you know, what your, your, your writing, your shows, like everything is just kind of falling under that since he's come out. Of course we have things like uh poor things and other things that he's doing, but anything outside of that, it just seems like this is all that there is uh, going to be. Does anybody think that he is ever going to get beyond this narrative or this? will this be forever his story for his career until he just milks it dry? 
I really hope so for his sake, because he is more than <laughs> who he sleeps with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would be interested in knowing who he is at his core. He does seem he's, he does seem as though he has a level of intellect. Right. And I yeah. would have loved to see us explore explore that more. Um, but yeah, un unless they come out with something and he's giving like way more of himself truly of who he is outside of his body count outside of like the shock value. Yeah. I wouldn't be tuning in. I, I hope that for him, that's my prayer for him um, that he can kind of come to terms because it still seems like he's grappling with this more than anyone else really is like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm happy for you. Like, let's, let's get, let's talk, let's talk about other things. Like there's more to you right than this. So that's my hope for him. Will he get there? I don't know, but I hope so. Yes, Joshua, his family is definitely that traditional Black Southern family. And, you know, more things that we could, you know, that's a whole nother conversation to be had about that. But he's just not not touching on that. We haven't gotten to the family yet. Maybe that'll be, you know, something that he touches on. D Movie Man is in the house. You know, I love you. <laughs> Thought the same thing about uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes. Tried to hold out hope and give the benefit of doubt, but it was always hell no. How now? <laughs> it's a hell no for me, dog. HBO is going out quite sad. Oh, man. Let's see. Uh, how old is he? A thousand boys. <laughs> Hey, Sins Corner. Thank you so much for being here. How long you been in the chat, Sin? I didn't know you were there. Hey, Sin. Shout out to Sin showing love. Say he's going to milk it dry. What the hell? Let's see the next episode. He literally shows his dad a picture of his boyfriend in his underwear. Oh, gosh. I don't have any hopes. <laughs> Oh, let's see. I like how Joe Button described the show uh, on his podcast. He basically called Gerard a thought. <laughs> I absolutely love y'all. Uh, always watching. Do you have um, any hopes for uh, Gerard getting beyond this narrative of I'm out, I'm proud, and this is all I'm going to talk about, milking it dry? Or is he going to be on this, get beyond this and kind of evolve more back into what he was doing before? Because like you said, he's regressing. I feel like I like him to be honest. Like I do have hope for him. Like this, I feel like he thought the show is much better than it actually is. Like you get the feeling that people around him are like, "This is amazing. This is great." And now it's out, and people are like, "This is terrible," and you're a bad person. Like it's not even having the effect. Like it's fine if you're doing horrible things, but it has to feel honest. And I think that's my problem with the series. It doesn't feel very honest. Mm. And so I I hope he takes the feedback because he's very self aware. I, he knows how he comes off. Like he knows exactly what he's doing. So let's see. I I do like him, but this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> Fish jelly. What about you guys? Are we gonna stay here forever, or are we gonna explore different facets of Gerard's comedy stylings? <laughs> I mean, I probably like him more than you do, but this this. <laughs> series was it's like you like somebody and you're excited about somebody and then you look at their social media and you're like oh you're oh. basic like that okay <laughs> um, so it's disappointing but i feel like we uh what you said earlier you you're right we are more than who we sleep with and part of this feels like when ellen degeneres came out and then her show became all about her, it was just about her being a lesbian and then that <laughs> show kind of petered out it, it's yeah. like he's got to find a way to get beyond this and you know a, a minor supporting role in a very notable movie. He's going to need to do more than that to make us forget, I think. But also, he's not young. I mean, I'm older, so I can say that, but he's like damn near 40. So, I mean, if you're behaving this way, I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that there is a little bit more. Uh, last question. If I do decide to come back, which I'm probably am, cause I like to start when I finish, would you guys be down to come and join in on the conversation? <laughs> Let's see. I got some, yes, it's muted, but I think I got some okays from fish jelly. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Ashley, I see you pressing them lips together. What, how are you feeling about it? For you, Tyra, I, 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 I would do it just for Come you. Come on. We, 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 came, we came for, you know, the Tyler Perry situation. What was it? What was the show? Mia Copa? What was that? We, 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 we stayed for that. We, we could give Gerard a little bit more time if we gave Mia Copa the time. By the way, I listened to the Mia Copa review this morning. It was very good. <laughs> if people haven't listened, they need to listen. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, always watching, will you be down to come back? 
<laughs> I will, because um, I'll watch it anyway, so it's better to just vent, I think, in a group. <laughs> that that was that's why I had you guys here because I was like I just this is not I want to talk about it but it was like I don't uh, it was a little too cringy for me to feel like I want to talk about it by myself uh, absolutely not but you guys have been absolutely amazing Ashley I am going to come to you first give you the solo screen for a second so you can tell the people what you do on your channel where to find you and for all 200 of your asses in the live to get over there you know how i feel about y'all supporting going over there liking and subscribing to my folks if i brought them here they're amazing go on over there <laughs> let me take this off ashley go ahead and take it Hey y'all. So yeah, there's some of everything on my channel. Um, I do a lot of scripted uh, dramas. I'm doing Mary and George right now, Palm Royale, BMF, DR from Detroit, Sugar, like Parish. I'm doing a ton of shows. So if you are a TV series aficionado, come on over and join me there. Um, I do lives a couple times a week too. I'm getting my feet wet, but yeah, it's a fun place and I'm sure there's something. Uh, for you to enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, Tyra, for having me as well. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. You're always amazing. Once again, Ashley's information is down there in the description box. I think Ashley is on Twitch, Twitter, X, um, TikTok. Ashley's on everything. It's just my ass that's still just on Instagram because I don't have, I just don't feel, I just don't want to. I'm on my Gerard. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it, but thank you so much, Ashley. And I will definitely be over there to watch your DR alive. I, I've been watching the show. I've been I've been catching up for you. Get the things I do for you. Thank you, Ashley. You have been awesome. Let me go on and take it away and give it to the fish and jelly. I just I just love you. Fish and jelly just rolls off your tongue, even though it's fish jelly. Every time I go find their channel, I type in fish and jelly. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh gosh. You guys go ahead and take. Now I'm thinking about what fish and jelly might taste like, but anyway. nothing I want to try, yeah. but yeah. So we have a YouTube channel where we do spoiler filled reviews of new releases. We have a podcast where we talk about a lot of things, but we always end with a retro movie review. Mm -hmm. We also have a Patreon where people can pay us to talk about movies of their choice. Mm -hmm. So we're fish jelly everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Check us out. That's about it. <laughs> and you get to see these faces. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> no, you guys are great. I love how short and sweet it is. Anytime, like, I get, like, settled in my chair and you guys get to the end of your reviews, it's like, is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's always really sharp and concise. I love that. Absolutely love that. Thank you guys so much. And I would love to have you back. Hopefully, it will not be for anybody's, you know, Gerard. I, I, will, I will bring you back for something good. Because Please yeah. do. Please do. <laughs> No, like, but I, I did, I did love uh, everything that everybody uh, expressed on what we had here mostly. And I still think it was a great conversation, given the mere, you know, shallow subject matter that was given. But I'm going to bring it over here to my girl who has been, oh, she's been subscribed to me forever. And I appreciate her so much. I appreciate you so much. I'm just so glad that I finally got you here. And I know, what time is it for you where you are? Right now it is 3.44 a.m. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. See, y'all didn't even know that. <laughs> y'all didn't even know that. She has been just absolutely amazing for rocking out with us the entirety of this time at that particular hour. But I'm going to give you the screen to let everybody know what you do on your channel and where they can find you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Tyra. So you can find me on Always Watching. I believe Tyra linked it down below. Like everyone else here, I do movie and TV reviews. If you love foreign films, I have like a Foreign Friday series. And my next few reviews will be more about, like, I'm excited for Severance, The Boys, um, My Brilliant Friend. So if you're looking to be, if you're looking for things you normally wouldn't check out, feel free to browse my page. And that's it. Thank you, Tyra. Yes. Absolutely. Like, yo, thank you. Like, because I know, I know what time it is over there. I'm finna get you out of here. <laughs> get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my goodness i am definitely gonna get you out of here but you guys have been great thank you to everybody who showed love remember that everybody's in the description box below go and support as far as i'm concerned y'all already know how youtube be treating me um 
I'm gonna be there when I get there. <laughs> like I'm gonna be where I'm at. Y'all will get the post when I post them, and that's just all I can give for right now. Of course, we have uh Bend It Like Beckham coming up, which is you know, I don't know why they're trying to give me a hard time for that one. That's like the most innocent movie, and I ain't even curse now. I don't think I curse one time, but Bend It Like Beckham is coming up, uh Ray is coming up. Uh, you guys, if you guys are checking for any of these and you guys want to come for the live discussion for those, that would be awesome too. Ray, uh, Strictly Business from 1991 is coming up as well as the book of Eli, if I'm not mistaken.